Hey guys, Joel Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Today is the day. Actually, today is Thursday, September 19th, 2024. It's my birthday, as a matter of fact. September 19th, that's my birthday. Can't think of a better way to celebrate my birthday than to close a project out that I've been working on for 10 months. I cannot believe it's been 10 months since I started this. Going to put this together probably in a little bit of fast-forward motion going on here because you've seen most of these solid symbols go together. And I will point out the custom things aside from this freaking door on the side. Man, what a what a piece of work that was. I will point out all the little custom nifties on this machine when I'm done. And I think you'll appreciate it. Thank you very much for hanging in there and checking this out. Let's do it. Hmm. Damn, ten months. You nuts. This is the knee of the machine. The instructions called for the elevation screw to run all the way through to the casting, but I put a bumper there so that it wouldn't eat its way through that casting. The spindle itself is modified to like a Cat 40 twin tab front, and the rear diameter is increased to accept a 256 draw bar as opposed to the 080 that they wanted you to use. The bed they're calling this, the automatic feed clutch mechanism, this was a little bear to create. And it's something you need to take your time on. This is a very delicate, very, very functional assembly. And I'm quite proud of it. That's a 440 lead screw going across there, two and a half inches long. The door. No, this door was a labor of love, and it's something I wanted right from the get-go. You can see there's a plastic bushing on both sides of the knob and the cam. There will never be any friction there. The lobe itself is brass, and so are the hinges. telescopic u-joint mechanism this thing was a lot of fun to make take some patience i pinned it instead of using screws it just looks more streamlined the saddle oh, you saw the modifications on that recently hex draw bar should have been square but i wasn't paying attention most draw bars are hexes so i just went with it All right, well, I got to tell you, you got to have 19 hands and fingers the size of toothpicks and the patience of a saint to put this thing together. Well, let's take a look at it. I put a rubber, actually, a earthquake. I put a Delrin red ring around the stop bumper here that disengages the clutch because if this was a real machine, this would be a pinch point. So, a little warning sign right there. Kind of sunk the screws on the front. You saw that in a previous video. Clutch mechanism is effective. Let's see if we can get that to go for you. Come on. The ratio here is so small. I'm trying not to hit the camera with my thumb, so hang on. There it is. This is the way you engage and disengage the power feed for the table. And for this particular model, I swapped out the steel and the brass, and the same thing with the crank. I went with the steel on brass for both locations. Let me know in the comment line if you like the way that looks. Brass gibbs, 20 thou thick. They are recessed at each screw location, so they will not walk out. There is a... Delrin bumper on the table lead screw so the table screw can ride up against the casting and not eat anything up. And it also keeps the gears gapped real well. Next step is to put this onto the base and then install the spindle. A lot of hours there guys, a lot of hours. Table knee apron successfully installed. There is a brass gib there as well. 20 thousandths thick, relieved down to 10 thousandths at each screw contact location. And you can see the oil on the screw for anybody that's going to say, have you been lubricating this thing? It's like, yes, I have. So we crank that up and down. Looks like a charm. Little or no slop whatsoever. Now with the table on, we can put the spindle in and put the side door on. I think I'm going to put the side door on. For, for, let's do that next. 
If anybody's curious about this little cam that I made for the locking mechanism, yes, it does lock. There's an undercut inside the door channel where this comes around, swings around, goes right in it. Matching radius. Uh, it's an offset point of rotation, though, or this would just slide right out, right? And when it's at rest, you can see that it falls within the boundaries of the door frame, so the door will open and close. Thank goodness for CAD rattling, right? And anybody that didn't watch the entire series, this door is not part of the model. I mean, it is now. But it is not part of the kit. This casting was solid when I got it. And I just said, nope to the nope. Need a door. So now we got a door. Clockwise, lock it. Clockwise, open she comes. Two shelves on the inside. Looks like a bank vault, doesn't it? I like the I like the mass of it. Starting to look like something now. All right, let's do the spindle pulleys, power feed. See what we got. I was extremely pleased with how free the spindle spun when I kicked the cone pulley with my finger. These oil cups are an addition. They're brass. That's a 256 thread going through to the spindle bore. The print called for an oil hole, but I think the addition of a cup just gives it a little extra, little extra detail. You make the decision to add the oil cups to your model bear in mind that there's not a whole lot of room in the back and yes i did the spindle does rock back and forth make contact with all the plastic bushings as well as the front of the spindle and this back here is secure and there will never be the opportunity for face-to-face -face contact that's why there's no bushing in the back the walls here are pretty thin make sure that you don't go in and pinch your spindle Nothing worse than a pinch spindle, right? All right, let's move on to the power feed. The dual drive mechanism located directly in front of the machine is an interesting setup that I had never seen before. The top drive shaft moves the table in and out on the y-axis. Ever so smooth with those gibs in there. That is just like butter. And the bottom one raises and lowers the table. You can also see some gib screws on the left-hand side just below the crank. I am extremely proud of how this side door came out. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And if there's anybody out there that would like to see the uh, math or the geometry behind that little cam, please put that in the comment line. It might be a great subject for a, a rotary table and an engineering video coming up. That is an 093 hex in this little brass wrench right there. I just recently did a video on how that was done. That was actually broached on the bridge port, or on my mill, it's not a bridge port. But it was done with a rectangular brooch, which I thought was very creative. I did opposing flats and only indexed the part twice.
fake door, guys. That's not going to work for me. Uh-uh. Nope. That will be a real door by the time I'm done. I promise. I really get carried away. I might make shelves inside and tools on them shelves to boot. <laughs> Who knows? I might lose my mind between now and then, too. We'll see.